The goal today is to put the surface grinder, which is right here, on the base, which is right here. Now, if you notice, the base has three mount points and one is not like the other. Basically two flat, or there's three flat points and then there's one point that is basically a threaded hole. So what I think is going on here is you got these three flat points and then this other strange point. And since three points define a plane, these points, and they're basically all level, these points will be basically what the surface grinder is sitting on. This one, which has this guy going into it, I'm thinking will take this bolt here, which will hard mount to the bottom of the surface grinder. So this is the surface grinder. And attach to that point here. So this is going up. And I think this point is used to account for any light twisting in the bed because when we pulled the surface grinder off of this base it was super twisted it was all jacked up someone had reefed on this connection and I think you get it level in there and then any out of parallel you used to account for this I could be completely wrong so if, if you anybody if anybody watching this knows why the uh, there's these three similar mount points and there's one different one let me know and on these we have these spherical alignment washers that are going to sit on here and these bolts hold it up. Since I have uh, two extra of these big bolts, I'm going to cut off the heads so that I can screw these into the bottom of the surface grinder and use them as alignment pins so that when I drop the surface grinder down here they'll line up just right. Okay, keep coming down. You are clear. But the surface grinder is pretty level. I guess I need to put that tube in there with the other bolt and put the bed on to see how it sits. 
and that will determine how much I might need to adjust any twist in this guy. I put in the, 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 the twist mount in here, just lightly snug, it's not even, it's not even torquing this at all, but it, that feels like very flat. I mean, yeah, before it was extremely bad. I mean, it seems good, like, I think it's good to go with. So it's not super easy to see all the parts in there, but this is pushing the, the uh, smaller pulley out too far, so what we're probably going to have to do is I'm going to have to machine a, a bronze bushing that I can go on the other side of the pulley and reverse the order of this. Here as I can tell by looking at the cryptic drawings that I made of how this stuff goes together. There's an internal bore that a needle bearing used to be, and then there's an external that had another type of bearing. We couldn't find this bearing, but it doesn't matter because this used to be a whole different type of system. Uh, when I went over the previous videos, it used to have an oil control rod and a spring because this was on a rack, some sort of rack system. But now it's just turning a belt, so it doesn't need to be as fancy. So I think what we're going to do is on that end, we're going to have the needle bearing, then a bronze bushing, then one of these little springs, these little flat springs, then another bronze bushing, then this, which will have flats milled on it. This bronze bushing will sit against the the housing, basically, and this will this will compress. The shaft will be screwed on here, and this will sort of tighten it up. And then on the other end, we'll have this big bronze bushing that'll be machined to fit in that. And then that will accept the flats that the hand wheel goes on. This will get set screw there and then we'll basically compress the shaft against the spring. Now that this is in here, I can uh, I can mark the shaft to cut for the hand wheel. Now that the hand wheel and service grinder are installed, in the next video we'll go over setting up the oiling system and doing the final install of the main components.